Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Gagney, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last few lectures, actually the last nine to be precise, we have been discussing one of the main management systems of an operating system, the memory management system. We started out with the early version that uh, required that all uh, jobs be loaded into contiguous memory locations. For the last three lessons, or last two or three lessons, been discussing the more modern approach to memory management, and that is paging, in which the operating system loads a job from the disk and in the process breaks that job into small units, logical units that are referred to as pages. Now the size of these pages may be determined a number of ways. They could be based upon the size of a sector on the disk or perhaps memory location, whatever. They are broken into smaller pieces. The job is broken into smaller pieces and each piece is assigned a page number. This is a logical address. As these pages are loaded into physical addresses in memory, the memory management unit has to determine what physical addresses are available. We can assume that this is not the first job that's being loaded. So there may be other jobs in the system already taking up some of those memory spaces. And that's accomplished by means of a table called a memory map table which indicates the memory address, the physical memory address, and whether or not that address is free or busy. So it could be some sort of a Boolean value to indicate free or busy. Once it finds an available memory space that's available, the memory management unit will write that page to that address. Now, in order to keep up with the pages of a particular job, it's necessary to have a page map table. And the page map table it com includes a number of uh, records with a couple of fields, one being the page number and the other being a, an address in memory where that page begins. The system also has to keep up with what jobs are in memory, and that is done by means of a job table, which has a list of all the jobs and another field to indicate the address of each job's page, page table or page map table. So why don't we pick up where we left off in the last lesson. Remember now that as it's running, the CPU is actually calling for those logical page addresses. So it is necessary for that memory management unit to translate that logical address into that physical address in order to retrieve the, the instruction that is being called. Looking back at this image on the left, what we are about to see are the steps taken by that memory management unit to translate a logical address generated by the CPU into a physical address. Okay, the CPU has handed the memory management unit a logical address composed of a page number and a displacement within the page to the instruction that's needed. The memory management unit extracts that page number and uses it to search the page map table. As you can see over here, it goes down the list and searches for the page map table. It then extracts the frame number. Here's the page map table. It scrolls down the pages till it finds the page it needs and then it extracts the frame number which is the physical location of this page. It then replaces the page number with the frame number so now it has the physical address of the instruction it needs which includes the frame number and the displacement within the frame where that record is needed. As an example, it found whatever the frame number is for page 0 and scrolled down the displacement of 86, as we mentioned in an earlier example, to get the instruction that it needs. Now you should have noticed in the process of this translation that the memory management unit took the logical address which included the page number and the displacement. 
it looked up the page number in the page table in order to get the actual physical address, which is right here. So it looked in the page table by page number order, went down till it found the page in the question, pulled in the physical address of the page, and then replaced the page number in the record with the physical number. You'll notice that the displacement did not change. But instead of being page number displacement, which is a logical address, it is now physical address and the displacement, which will lead us to the appropriate place in memory. The page size and the frame size are both defined by the hardware. You may have noticed that paging itself is a form of dynamic relocation. Every logical address is bound by the paging hardware to some physical address. Using paging is like using a table of base registers or relocation registers, whichever you prefer. One register for each frame of memory. Notice that frames are allocated as units. If the memory requirements of a process do not happen to coincide with page boundaries, the last frame, as we have already discovered, may not be completely full. The authors offer another example. If a page size is 2048 bytes, a process of 72,766 bytes will need 35 pages. Trust me on that. You don't have to do the math. But it also leaves a remainder of 1,086 bytes. That means that the process will be allocated 36 frames, resulting in an internal fragmentation of 962 bytes. Worst case scenario is that a process would need all the pages plus one byte. It would be allocated all uh, one additional page, which would be fragmented in, in its entirety except for that one byte. Now here's, what, here's the point. This consideration about these page sizes and process sizes suggests that small page sizes are desirable. Obviously, you don't have that much internal fragmentation in small pages. However, overhead is involved with each page table entry. And this overhead is reduced as the size of the pages increases. Also, disk I.O. or disk input and output is more efficient when the amount of data being transferred is larger. Generally, page sizes have grown over time as processes, data sets, main memory, and all that have become larger. Today, pages are typically either 4K or 8K in size. Some systems support even larger page sizes. Some CPUs and operating systems even support multiple page sizes. Why don't we stop here? Take a while to review this lecture, update your study guide, and when you're ready, come on back and we'll move on to a discussion of free frames, free available memory locations.